Last but not least, phylum chordata. And this is probably going to be one of the most familiar phylums because this is the phylum that humans are found in. Also, when we're doing species spotlight, all of the classes that you guys are looking up, reptilia, aves, sarcoterygy, those are all part of phylum chordata. So phylum chordata includes all of the vertebrates, so things with a backbone, but there's also some related organisms that don't have a backbone, but they are very closely related to us. And that's because they share common characteristics between backboned organisms, uh, or they share common characteristics with backboned organisms. And we'll talk about those common characteristics in a moment. So our symmetry, we are bilateral organisms and we're triploblasts. Now really, just think about humans when we're thinking about these different characteristics. Because we're a triploblast, we do have a coelom, and we are true coelomates, so we are eucoelomates. And just like our echinoderms, we are deuterostomes. So our anus forms first, and then second is the formation of our mouth. Thinking about our digestion, uh, hopefully none of you have incomplete digestion. We do have complete digestion. And because of our bilateral symmetry, we do have cephalization. When you think about humans, we do have a central nervous system, we have a brain, uh, we have a lot of sensory organs in a centralized area, in our case, our head. Uh, so these characteristics not only apply to humans, but to frogs, to birds, and to really essentially all of these organisms that you see down here. And we'll explore a lot of these organisms while we're doing species spotlight. Now I mentioned before that phylum chordata, we actually have characteristics that tie all of us together. There's four main characteristics. The first one I'll talk about is a dorsal hollow nerve cord. Dorsal means along the back side of an organism. This is a little bit easier if you think about a fish, so it's along like the back side of a fish. And the thing about humans, it literally is along our back. This nerve cord in humans is our spinal cord. And this is found uh, on top of the notochord. We will talk about what the notochord is in just a moment. But very briefly, the notochord is essentially what becomes our backbone. So it's found uh, on uh, the back side of our body. And in humans, this is what gives rise to our spinal cord and our brain. And a lot of other organisms, this also becomes their spinal cord, but the development of a brain uh, is quite different organism to organism, but it is essentially their nervous system, with this spinal cord being kind of the, or this nerve cord almost being the centralized area. This is where a lot of those nerves are stemming from, but eventually connecting to the brain, or at least connecting to a centralized nervous tissue, even if it's not a fully developed brain. The other characteristic that we have that I mentioned on the previous slide is the notochord. This is actually where the name chordata comes from. It's from the notochord. So the notochord is found between the nerve cord and the digestive system, and its whole purpose is skeletal support. Now when I say skeletal support, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bone. It could be cartilage as well. And it actually started out as cartilage. So it is this long structure, and if you look at this organism, it kind of demonstrates it pretty well. So here's that dorsal hollow nerve cord along the top. Here we have the notochord. The notochord is this long structure along that nerve cord that is either made out of cartilage, or in some organisms it's made out of bone, that is providing support for the entire organism. By support, I mean essentially I mean, we're seeing skeletons. We are seeing shape of organisms because we now have some sort of structure inside that organism. So when we think about vertebrates, you know, our notochord is essentially uh, our backbone. So in subphylum vertebrata, which we'll talk about in a little bit, we don't have a cartilaginous notochord. Uh, when we're embryos, we do, and we can actually see that. But it does develop into our spine, into the backbone, and that is what's supporting our body. Now, uh, what's kind of interesting, so if we look, this is an example of one single vertebrae in our back. Now, our dorsal nerve cord is actually integrated into 
our notochord. So we do still have both those structures, although they have changed a little bit. So our vertebrae is this notochord, and then inside of the vertebrae is a, essentially an opening that allows for the spinal cord uh, to navigate through, uh, which is this uh, dorsal knot dorsal hollow nerve cord. So we have both of these structures. They look a little bit different than say some of our ancestors, early ancestors in chordata, but we still share those characteristics. Another characteristic that we have, and we talked about this a long time ago when talking about evolution, uh, is pharyngeal slits. So the pharynx is this area on humans, it's around this area. In some organisms, these become gills. Uh, other organisms that might be used for filtering food, others it might be um, different bones that form the jaw, which is what it is in us. So these pharyngeal slits that we had as an embryo, so even humans had this as an embryo, this is showing five different embryos and you can see these gill slits or these pharyngeal slits in all of these species. Just what they end up turning into or becoming really depends on the organism. In humans, you should know um, that it's part of just like the stuff in here. So for example, in tetrapods, so tetra meaning four, pods meaning feet. This doesn't necessarily mean you have to have four feet, like humans are tetrapods, we have four main appendages. Our pharyngeal slits is still in this region. It is becoming different components in our ears. Uh, it's becoming part of our tonsils, which are found in the pharynx region. Uh, so even in humans, these pharyngeal slits still have a purpose. Uh, and we share this with all these other chordates. It's just what they turn into uh, is different depending on the organism we're looking at. And then last but not least, what we also see in this embryology is a post-anal tail. Even as embryos, humans had tails. And there's actually some humans, if you Google this, you'll find tons of photos. There's some humans that actually, their tail continued to grow. The genes didn't turn off to stop the growth of their tail. So we have this for most humans, we lose it as an embryo, but we share this with all other chordates. If you think about an organism that lives in aquatic environment, so water bodies, that tail gets used for movement. But if you think about land animals, it can be used for balance, it can be used for cording. So think about a peacock, you know, those tail feathers. Uh, if you think about um, kangaroos, they're using it for balance. It can be used as communication tools. So thinking about dogs, if a dog's tail is you know, wagging, that means one thing, but if the dog's tail is between its legs, that means something completely different. Uh, in humans, it's vestigial. We either don't have a tail, some humans do, but we don't have a tail, but we still have a tailbone. We still have the remnants of a tail. Now, although the tailbone doesn't do anything for us, this is why it's vestigial, but it's also showing evidence of our similarities with these other organisms. So these four characteristics are found in all of our chordates, and as we look through Species Spotlight with some of our most a primitive species such as cephalospedomorphy all the way up to mammals, we share all of these characteristics with them. And we share these characteristics with other chordates that we're not even going to talk about that are even simpler than the simplest ones that we talk about. Now to introduce just one more classification, within phylum chordata we have subphylum vertebrata. So subphylum vertebrata are the vertebrates. These are organisms that have a notochord that could still be made out of cartilage, but has a lot more structure than the notochord found in some of our non-vertebrate species. So we have uh, the vertebral column. We have essentially a backbone that is integrated with the spinal cord. This backbone may be made out of cartilage, like we would see in some, or in shark species, for example, or it might be made out of bone, like we see in fish and birds and mammals. So we do have this backbone, could be made out of cartilage or bone, that integrates the spinal cord with it, and actually acts as a protective tool for that spinal cord. 
The other organisms in phylum Chordata that are not in this subphylum might have that notochord, like a very simple like piece of cartilage, and that's about it. So we've gotten a little bit more complex. And this is where we end. So where we're going to pick up next time is with your species spotlight organisms that are now taking a closer look at some of the classes found in subphylum vertebrata, like we see here in this picture.